हेलो गाइस माय नेम इज़ अमित सैनी वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू एंड आई वेलकम यू इन द मॉर्निंग सेशन ऑफ द द हिंदू एनालिसिस एंड डेली इन हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश बोथ लैंग्वेजेस दीज लेसन कम एंड इन द इवनिंग द पी आई बी लेसन कम इन बोथ इंग्लिश एंड हिंदी लैंग्वेज एंड द पी डी एफ यू विल गेट ऑन द स्टडी आई क्यू टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड माई फेसबुक ग्रुप ऑफ अमित सैनी ग्रुप फॉर आई एस प्रिपेरेशन सो दे आर ऑल्सो आई अपलोड ऑल दीज पी डी एफ्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद वन इम्पॉर्टेंट कोड द बेस्ट प्रोजेक्ट यू विल एवर वर्क ऑन इज यू you see when you want to improve any kind of system any kind of uh, uh, project is there the focus is done at first they need to do study uh, it they need to uh, note down all the related facts regarding that project and they will focus all their energies on that and then they will observe what kind of changes are happening so you need to uh, make yourself that project if you want to improve yourself because in this cutthroat competition you need to become more strengthful you need to become more uh, emotionally managed you need to become much more uh, performing in a, a way i must say so for that you need to focus on yourself make yourself an entity and focus on you only that's why that is the only way you can improve in this particular age and if if you will keep caring about your family friends and uh, uh, any other issue apart from your studies then certainly your energy is not focused so focus on you you need to become selfish for yourself for some time okay it doesn't mean that you harm anyone or you apply some shortcut tricks or you cheat someone but you need to be uh, you need to stay very much a uh, stiff and tough for yourself and you need to focus on yourself only that's the game changing idea next mcu that i gave to you yesterday regarding the reservation reservation is given in article 16 is adequate uh, adequately representative okay it is not proportional representation or proportional reservation it is adequate reservation for the communities which historically were not uh, included into into the mainstream and injustice was there and they became socially and educationally backward only three only two socially and educationally backward not economic backward so that's something that that's why this option is wrong and article 15 supports reservation to depressed class yes because article 15 says there should be positive discrimination we need to uplift the suppressed classes so that's why this reservation is a positive uh, discrimination although it's a discrimination but it's a positive discrimination so that's why only two is the correct answer here second regarding the international energy agency atomic energy agency headquarter is there in austria vienna is the capital and established not after 1973 oil crisis international energy agency which is a separate organization energy agency was established after the 73 oil crisis in in the middle east and it supports peaceful use of nuclear weapons no it does not support use of nuclear weapons i have written here the weapons word it supports nuclear energies peaceful use not weapons so that's why none would be the correct answer here third one nuclear power share of global electricity production has risen from 10% to 16.5% no it is just opposite it was 16.5% in 97 but in 17 it has become 10% decline is there because of their high cost and the safety measures which are needed in application of this nuclear energy so there is decline so this is wrong france is the biggest producer of the nuclear energy perfectly right so only two is the correct answer here next we will discuss these important articles and one article that uh, was left as the curial island and uh, that issue that we are going to discuss mostly these articles today are on the political lines and uh, we will not go into their depths because not much uh, things are there which are important for examination but uh, on the basis of social issues and the context of uh, understanding of the problems of the society some are important so quota question as i told you 10% is given uh, it would be important for gs 1 2 and 4 and uh, essay section would be very much relevant here and uh, reinstated the alok verma cbi director is reinstated so that's not much of important gs2 you can relate it with and uh, the renewed attack on privacy gs3 and gs2 also because it is also involving the questions of governance now the staggering backwards the, uh, the reservation gambit it is regarding gs1 the societal issues and the uh, social justice 
in GS2 and GS4 uh, also you may have a lot of case studies and in the essay part very important article next regaining respect it's an important issue of GS3 because it is regarding the logic science and the talk of science so that's the thing now see quota question 124th constitutional amendment bill they are uh, bringing in the Lok Sabha it is passed and you see the relevant case here is Indra Sahani case of 1992 versus Union of India and it was the nine judges bench which gave this decision that earmarked uh, which which was earmarked earlier 10 percent for, uh, for economically backward people that was given in the proposal but this nine judge bench it struck down this provision they said that economic criteria cannot be the sole basis to determine backwardness because economics of a person can change but their caste and their history cannot be changed and you see this these the caste is by birth but economics is not by birth anybody can become poor or anybody can become richer if that person works hard and he, he applies his mind then that person can improve his wealth conditions so that's why this cannot be the reason any attempt to amend the constitution to extend what is limited to the socially and educationally backward so only this criteria is applied in the reservation process and you see this is perfectly right that in today's time many many students or the people from general category are facing economic crisis they are in utter need of support but you see the issue of reservation is based on different criteria that the writer is saying and when this will proceed towards the legal course then this will face difficulties because the constitutional bench in 2016 ruled that equality is the part of basic structure and when 50 percent ceiling is there for the reserved category 50 percent is open to non-reserved category so it is equality principle according to the court otherwise it is not proportional you see in the mandal commission which came uh, which gave its report and it was uh, started in 1979 the second commission came which said that population of OBCs at that time it was 52% of the India's population and today it is around 60% more than 60% uh, OBCs I'm talking about I'm giving you the example of a proportional uh, reservation 60% is the population but the actual reservation that is given that is 27% seats and the population of SCs and SCs that is not much but th uh, those are given 22.5 percent reservation collectively scs and sts 15 plus 7.5 percent okay so that's the reservation given to them so it is not according to the population it is according to the social and uh, educational backwardness that is the issue and after that now when it becomes 49 plus 10 then certainly it is going to cross the 50 percent line Okay, so this is going to be a big problem and the equality issue of in article 14 that is going to be crucial here because it is crossing the 50% line then the non reserved category students they are going to be a victim of it victim of inequality and uh, you see it is not clear if the government has the quantifiable data to show the people show that people from lower income groups are underrepresented because representation is a main uh, a theme here main basis here for the reservation and if we talk about the general category then general category counts for the highest representation in the jobs but because there is no separate category of economically backward people under general category then the representation would be counted as the general category representation okay now see another issue that uh, uh, when they are adequately represented then that is the one condition second condition reservation cannot be given on the economic criteria so both things are opposite to this particular bill so it's a pacifist bill or uh, the writer is saying it is totally on the political lines because uh Lok Sabha elections are due and every time uh, before the election time these kind of decisions they come from the government's side so it would be difficult for this law to get passed in the legal course now uh traditionally this reservation was provided to the historically uh, uh with the communities which were under historical stress and they uh, there were a lot of instances of historical injustice for thousands of years so their social exclusion was a reality so that's why the reservation was given but it was not the case with the general category okay just opposite case was there they were the exploiters at that time so that's why this reservation was, was, was given but the situation economically are totally changed today 
सो दैट्स दैट दैट्स हाउ इट बिकम्स अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स सिचुएशन द केस ऑफ तमिलनाडु तमिलनाडु हैज सिक्सटी रिजर्वेशन प्रपोर्शन एंड यू सी इट्स अनयूजल बट वाई इट इज अलाउड बिकॉज इन नाइनटीन दे ब्रॉड अ पर्टिक्युलर एक्ट okay schedule tribes act schedule tribes and nsc's act and it shot up the reservation up to 69% crossing the 50% line okay and how it survived because they brought it in ninth schedule you know about the ninth schedule of the constitution where any law that is included in the ninth schedule then it cannot be called null and void if it is infringing the fundamental rights so they brought it in 9th schedule and it is safe uh, since and 76th amendment act was there for this inclusion of this act in 9th schedule so 76th constitution amendment act was passed in 1994 it was regarding the tamil nadu reservation bill now the alok verma cbi director is reinstated you see uh, first we need to understand the condition of the cbi office cbi is headed by a director uh, he is an iaps and a rank of dg and other uh, staff is there from irs ips services and the police simple police services and all and this director is selected or appointed by a particular committee this committee consists of prime minister as chairperson leader of opposition as a member and chief justice of india or a supreme court judge any one of them recommended by chief justice would be a member so three member committee selects the cbi director it's the important uh, establishment under the lokpal and lokayukta act in 2013 before that cvc was the authority cvc the central vigilance commission which was established after the sanathan committee report in 1964 and it mainly concerns with the corruption issues in the government departments so cvc was uh, mainly dominating cbi uh, before this but now under the lokpal and lokayukta act this committee selects uh, these people and now they are saying that there should be independence in selecting these uh, directors of the cbi so that's the issue next important issue is main act regarding the cbi is delhi special police establishment act 46 okay 1946 and it this act empowers the committee to appoint the director of the cbi so this act empowers and the procedure was given under the lokpal lokayukta act now the problem is when they uh, stripped alok verma of his power or they sent him on leave at that time what they did actually what court is saying what the court is saying that logically you uh, you did the same thing if you would have transferred that person that would have brought same effect because that person can no more act on his in his official capacity so if you have sent him on leave then certainly you are not allowed to do that without the permission of the committee okay because committee is only allowed to transfer or uh, remove of that person that committee is uh, where uh, leader of opposition is there and uh, prime minister and chief justice of india is also there so that committee is only allowed and today uh, when uh, not today but at that time when they uh, sent him on leave uh, in a midnight so at that time court says that you did not have any kind of authority you did not have permission of the committee and you see already in 2014 this government demanded that the provision regarding the quorum what is quorum quorum is the minimum attendance that is required for any committee so that time leader of opposition in lok sabha was not there so uh, uh, bjp demanded that this condition should go and that's how they would be able to select the people of their choice okay so that was the thing and now these similar things are erupting now and they are bringing a lot of problems now court has reinstated alok verma but conditions are attached what conditions they said that he won't be able to take decisions okay for some time till what time within 7 days the select committee would meet again and they will decide the future of the Uh, issue of uh, this uh, CBI tussle and the Alok Verma case, whether he would be here or he would be working somewhere else, or he would be removed. So that committee will take the decision. So till that time, he won't be able to take any kind of decision. Decisions are barred for Alok Verma. So that that means it is indirectly the same situation. He is not able to work. 
because he was uh, going to work on very important uh, issues like rafael deal this this was the allegation that he was preparing for the rafael deal for the next day but in midnight they they, they uh, sent him on leave so out of official capacity he could not work so that is the main allegation here and in the vinita narayan case also supreme court in 1997 said that protect the agency cbi especially its director from external inter, uh, interference and there is clear interference from the politics political executive when they sent him on leave and uh, transfer of the director can only be made by the selection committee so these are the issues i have explained to you and within a week they will decide about this issue the select committee would meet and these are the things next renewed attack on privacy privacy is under threat for uh, quite a some time and uh, the aadhar bill allowing private bodies to use aadhar as a means to authenticate identity poses huge danger again after uh, the supreme court's verdict in september 18 when supreme court said that private entities cannot be allowed to give aadhar data because it's having very sensitive biometric data and that cannot be changed and uh, these kind of data cannot be allowed to private companies to remain because it would be a commercial exploitation totally and the state may convert into surveillance state okay and when the private organization their uh, the mnc's and all their importance their dominance is rising in the market if they will be accessing the sensitive data where aadhar is linked with almost all things all spheres of our life then they may uh, they may do all kinds of surveillance on our lives and commercial exploitation would be a perfect reality so that's how that's how uh, supreme court struck down the, that provision under the aadhar act okay so the writer is also talking about the aadhar act the way it was started and the way it was passed making as a money bill you see money bill there are conditions for money bill it, first of all any bill is declared money bill by speaker of the lok sabha okay who is from the ruling party uh, the sumitra majar is there she is from uh, ruling party and the ultimate authority is with her that that any bill would be would be a money bill or not but certainly money bill any bill can become money bill only if the provisions are related with withdrawing money from consolidated fund of india okay so that's how they declared uh, they declared it as a money bill but that was not only one condition a lot of important provisions were there in that particular bill so that bill could never have become the money bill but they declared it, it declared it money bill why because in money bill lok sabha is having the main authority Lo, uh, rajya sabha is not having any kind of authority okay rajya sabha can only suggest and within 14 days it has to uh, send this bill back to lok sabha and lok sabha will be uh, passing this act and the a uh, prior consent is already there from the president and uh, easily this bill would be passed so that's how the aadhar bill was passed actually it was targeted uh, subsidies of uh, delivery of subsidies and uh, direct benefit transfer act which was called aadhar act so this could never have become a money bill but they passed it as a money bill that was the main controversy and the biggest allegation on this act and even some said that it was totally a bypassing the uh, particular way of legislative process okay because what is the main procedure first they release a draft in public domain then the suggestions would come and then these scrutinies will go and all these committees and all they will uh, analyze the particular draft of the bill clause by clause they will read it and then it would be passed and all kinds of scrutinies would be there but this was totally passed uh, single handedly by the lok sabha because it was declared as a money bill so that's the thing so now Uh, after this striking down of supreme court in september again government is saying that mandatorily we cannot do this but voluntarily if some person wants to submit his aadhar id to these private companies or banks then it is totally allowed from our side and we are bringing this bill that if voluntarily you want to give it then it is allowed now see there are smart moves here what are the smart moves i will show you they said that if any customer wants to identify their uh, their uh, id or their uh, particular identity then there are some rules that these companies would ought to identify their customers by one of the four means this is the notification by government that authentication under aadhar act whether you take the aadhar data 
और ऑफलाइन वेरिफिकेशन अंडर द आधार एक्ट और द ऑफलाइन वेरिफिकेशन ऑफ द आधार एक्ट नेक्स्ट और द यूज ऑफ पासपोर्ट बट वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम विद द पासपोर्ट वेरी वेरी स्कैंटी पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंडिया इज हैविंग पासपोर्ट एंड एवरी पर्सन नो नोज दिस थिंग दैट इफ एनी सिंपल पर्सन एनी एवरेज आम आदमी वुड गो टू गेट इज पासपोर्ट इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट टार्डी प्रोसेस एंड पेन गिविंग प्रोसेस टू गेट द पासपोर्ट it's not a simple process very tough process so that's why it would it is going to be very very tough although it's a provision but how many people are having passport so that is the third condition fourth any other official valid document that government may notify but government is not notifying anything so ultimately only aadhar is left so ultimately you have to give your aadhar to the private companies or the banks that is the smart move here and that's why the uh, the writer says that it is so brazen that we will be failing in our collective duties where we to allow the amendments to be carried out without any debate okay so when it is going to pass without any debate then certainly it is a attack on democracy utter attack on democracy that the writer is saying and we need to save this despite the government's abject failure to enact comprehensive legislation protecting our data and our privacy first they fail and they uh, they tried to bring aadhar act making it is a money bill and they allowed all private companies to collect the aadhar data then they failed abject failure was there but instead of this this supreme court's important verdict they are again bypassing this supreme court verdict and it's actually a slap on supreme court's face openly that they are bringing these smart measures and now again they are putting these kind of conditions that you will need to submit your aadhar data to the private companies so that the writer is saying okay it is written in these lines now essential object of the law is to uh, countermine those portions of judgment that regime deems inconvenient you see when it was struck down by supreme court in september at that time what were the observations by supreme court because regime deemed some things inconvenient so inconvenient so inconvenient that the bill was introduced as a lawyer vrinda bhandari has argued in the wire by altogether overlooking the state's own pre legislative consultative policy whatever policy state has for pre legislative consultations they bypassed all these things and now when they are bringing this amendment bill this particular bill then certainly they are showing concern to some of the things that court said they are showing concern to some of the things but main thing is that what is the essential thing that was struck down by supreme court you are bringing that thing again the thing that was struck down by supreme court specially focusing on that particular thing that you were allowing private companies to take the data now you are bringing that thing back again that is the issue and uh, policy places an onus on the ministry introducing a law to publish the draft of any proposed legislation together with among other things the objectives behind the law and the estimated assessment of the impact that such legislation may have on fundamental rights and to thereafter invite comment from the public so this is that common procedure the way it should have gone to, to uh, through this particular process where all kinds of scrutinies would have been welcomed first after that you proceed but you are not doing these things okay you are bypassing all these things and this act is going to lead to a credible belief that the proposed changes are act of subterfuge subterfuge means you are doing something that is legally can never be allowed and the section 57 the most controversial part of the aadhar act which was struck down by the supreme court uh, that was the main issue so upsc may ask you uh, regarding the section 57 of the act in the prelims or the or in the mains okay so unanimously supreme court struck down section 57 as it applied to the private entities okay supreme court ruled on the validity of this legislation and the commercial exploitation issue as i told you when companies and all when you uh, search something on the flipkart amazon after some time if you open a website the same thing appears as an ad advertisement by these companies so these companies are collecting every data already you move your finger on the mobile that pattern is also uh, read by these companies so these companies are very very smart and they want to uh, 
go behind every move in your life so that they can know everything about you so that they can sell everything according to your need okay and this is how it can become a surveillance state if misuse can be there this is a very very strong tool if all data are there with them so if misuse can happen and in the country like india where data leaks are so common even the data leaks are there with the uh, yahoo company and so big nation germany ministers their datas were uh, put publicly on the website so if these things can happen with those developed countries so the situation with india is so uh, gloomy okay so now the right to privacy issue would be totally shattered again if you have put all these conditions okay so this would be declared unconstitutional again uh, it must be declared as unconstitutional the writer is saying this as the way it was declared unconstitutional in september 18 okay and when they are saying the clause of voluntarily that means ki uh, if voluntarily somebody wants to submit then certainly it's not a problem but the conditions you are attaching with it that is going to be the huge issue the conditions that i showed to you okay even by securing the individual's informed consent the court is saying the clause justice secret held disproportionately contravene the right to privacy if somebody is voluntarily giving it then certainly at that time also this proportional contravention is happening of the privacy because most of the people they don't understand these uh, deep processes okay so when government failed today there was no avenue available for fresh legislation intervention unless the government chooses to amend the constitution so that's why they are bringing this constitutional uh, amendment bill okay so this is in a straight way very wrong thing to do they are bypassing some things this is the allegation by the writer the same thing that i discussed here everything is written here and uh, next one more important point here the bill merely seeks to substitute the word joint secretary with secretary in section 33 2 completely disregarding the supreme court's order how because in september's judgment it was said that national security is a main issue it cannot be ignored and because of that it was allowed that the level of joint secretary post those people can access the other data of anybody if national security issue is there but now government is secretly replacing this joint secretary word with simple secretary that is the lower post and this is how if the secretary level post people will be allowed to uh, access the anybody's uh, anybody's other data then certainly it is going to be a very huge ideal because corruption at th those levels is very easy for the executive okay so that's the allegation now Rajya Sabha should resist any developing sense of ennui around the program and reject this bill for the utter contempt of democracy that's the main uh, thing next article is regarding the regaining respect whatever is going on in the name of uh, uh, ancient traditions or our acceptance or subscription to the ancient knowledge when on the scientific platform of indian science congress when hypotheses are being projected as truths this is the mockery of science the nobel laureate is saying nobel laureate venkatraman krishnan said in an email the talks need to be vetted by serious committees with the appropriate expertise why because in the inaugural lecture in the indian science congress you see what kind of things were said i uh, i would uh, show you they said that uh, korvas were test tube babies and india possessed knowledge about guided missiles centuries ago and uh, dr krishnan said uh, i'm rejecting einstein theory of relativity newton's theory of gravity and hawking's theory on black hole these all these all are wrong theories and you see before that also in the previous years uh, union uh, minister of state for hrd he said charles darwin's evolution theory is wrong nobody has seen that uh, uh, humans were apes or monkeys in the ancient period nobody knows about that nobody has seen that so i don't subscribe to this evolutionary idea evolution is a myth and man was always a man it is scientifically wrong so you see so great our ministers are and these are ministers of hrd they uh, 
manage these educational systems of the country and they say scientifically wrong this evolution theory is that means all the scientists all over the world for the last century whatever they are doing whatever they are uh, sacrificing their life that's total waste they should have approached uh, mr satyavan first satyapal first because he knows that scientifically it is wrong theory and uh, in 2018 also our minister of science and technology harshvardhan who himself is a doctor he claimed that stephen hawking once said the vedas had a theory superior to albert einstein e is equal to mc square so you see about all these theories they may be true they may be false but what's what is the science science is something that is factually a proved fact and by experiment it is proved that it's it's a fact so science runs on scientific facts not on hypothesis hypothesis is the first stage first hype hypothesis is the first thing after that experiment happens and then they uh, collect the facts observations are done and after that the proved fact is there proved scientific fact so science runs on proved facts but nobody can prove these things today they may prove in the future but till today these are not scientific facts so that's why it's a utter shame for our scientific community that the nobel laureate is saying and this is all nonsense where international science scientific community is participating in this uh, prestigious event and for the last 2 2 3 years it has been uh, a joke to attend this seminar because all these things are said here and by the eminent people even our prime minister said in october 14 that uh, uh, karnan ganesha where uh, the head transplant was there so we knew about cost cosmetic surgery and genetics it existed in india thousands of years ago but you see that may be true may be prime minister is saying all these things true but it cannot be proved till now till today head transplantation is not possible till today we cannot put somebody's brain on the other person's brain so it is not a scientific fact till date it may be a fact in future but you say that we knew these things in the ancient times that thing cannot be proved so these all are hypothesis so that is the thing that uh, for the last 2 3 years these things are consistently being said in the inaugural lectures that's why the nobel laureates and the scientist community is very much miffed and they said that there should be a rule that uh, isca scientific science congress uh, association decided to obtain in advance the abstract of the lectures of all the speakers whatever they would say it will be the, there with them if they will say something more than that then that person would be recalled from the lecture that person would be removed from the speaker's dais that would be the rule okay and they need to do now next association must take bold decisions to transform the congress into a platform for serious scientific discussions not these jokes ramakrishna nobel laureate who called the congress a circus he said that the circus is going on suggested that the meeting be made smaller and depoliticized politicians should not be called here and even this inaugural lecture is not necessary for the scientific seminars because these people hardly know about science he says this and even if they know but they make political statements here just to pacify our uh, political ideologies so that's the thing next is regarding the uh, cleanliness, cleanliness survey in the railways okay the data would come but it was swachh rail swachh bharat survey and uh, they ranked 407 railway stations across india okay so you can read about all these things pdfs will be provided on the telegram channel or on my uh, facebook group next one uh, remaining article that was there lessons from lessons for kashmir from the kurals you see i show you the situation here this is japan hokkaido island four islands are there in japan and japan is located on the uh, the pacific edge and the oceanic plate of pacific is uh, going under the eurasian plate so that's why consistent uh, earthquakes and volcanoes are there in japan japan is struggling with all these things for centuries now and this is the uh, uh, hokkaido honshu kyushu ryukyu ryukyu all these four islands are their main islands which are making japan country and these are kuril islands between japan's hokkaido and kamchatka peninsula of russia and this is sakhalin peninsula of russia so these are the disputed territories but you see 
in the last uh, 70 years japan has made enormous progress and russia has also made enormous progress although hypothetically these are adversaries because japan japan is usa's ally and uh, russia is the adversary of usa okay so traditionally or hypothetically these both are adversaries but now they know about each other they they know that japan uh, russia knows that japan is having a great military all aircraft carriers and enormous progress investment capacity and uh, japan also knows about russia's uh, enormous growth in the military uh, area so that's why they know about each other they both are progressing progressive countries and you know about everything about japan even after all these struggles all these adversities they are uh, uh, coming out as winners in every situation after every incidents even after 2011 tsunami they have redeveloped all these areas and it's totally unbelievable the progress is unbelievable for japan so we should learn about, uh, from these countries you see for these 56 islands they are now taking small steps some uh, uh, tourist packages vegetation uh, steps and uh, they are allowing the graves and uh, for these ancient japanese people because today the occupation is of russia of on all these islands but now they are allowing japanese to come here and establish some these small initiatives so that that is how they are coming closer towards friendship and you see when they both know about each other that they both are strong nations they know that fighting is totally dangerous to both uh, both countries progress it is never a fruitful thing but friendship would be very very fruitful japan can invest in the russia's eastern siberian area where uh, people are less and minerals are enormous uh, in amount so japan can invest there japan has technology and uh, japan knows that russia is making progress china is rising usa is uh, declining so there is no point in the future that usa would be that much strong and these countries would be weak there is no point it is going to be like this so J- japan thinks that friendship is going to be good and fruitful usa may have a problem with this but japan and russia are solving their problems and they are solving this issue they have never escalated the dispute of these territories the way we have uh, escalated you see the condition of country like pakistan we had nothing to eat people are not having their salaries and uh, always abusing each other radicalization religious intolerance everything is there but still they want kashmir so that's the irony so these countries should uh, the countries like pakistan and all they should focus on economic progress we should we, we as a country uh, india should also focus on progress economic strength so that we would become like japan and russia and then we won't be needing to worry about these issues petty issues they never worried about these issues and they know that uh, easily we can settle these issues we will not fight with each other there is no need to fight and there is no point we would fight so we should also not fight with pakistan and pakistan should also understand this thing so there is a great lesson from these uh, great countries you see after the world war 2 hiroshima nagasaki incident happened and japan was totally devastated before that japan was dominating the world japan in 1905 won russia ussr uh, japan won china japan won all indo china area okay so at that time usa was threatened and uh, usa uh, threw these uh, at- atomic bombs on hiroshima and nagasaki but japan was devastated at that time so from the scratch it started and within 70 years it became a super power okay one of the highest per capita income is there with japan so enormous unbelievable growth happened although the occupation is by the russian side on these islands but japan is claiming these uh, shikotan and habani and torofu and koa series four islands but still uh, they are amicably solving this issue they are not escalating this issue okay only eight of these islands are actually inhabited treated but now they are applying these important measures which are small steps okay package tourism vegetable uh, vegetable cultivation and uh, scheduled visits by japanese families who sought to visit the graves of their ancestors in these islands and all because at that time when japan became weak after world war 2 russia dominated these islands and they threw all japanese out from these islands so at that time history was totally against with each other but now they are not talking about the history because they know because of the history only something happened and now we are progressing countries 
and you see one more issue of the right wing politics which is prevalent in all over the world whether that we talk about india whether we talk about america whether we talk about european union brexit uh, britain here also the issue of uh, right wing politics and public opinion is there where people are totally totally conservative and they are saying that if you will compromise on our territory then we will not vote you it is the condition with abe it is the condition with putin but they are not paying attention to those things they are thinking about more progressive measures okay they are not escalating the issue so that's the thing and they know that these people are not that much troubled like the people of india are troubled okay they do they don't have anything to do they don't do anything productive in their life and they but uh, they are sitting on the streets sipping uh, at the Uh, sipping their tea and they will talk about the india china relations this is the situation in india but it is not the situation in japan and russia these people are very progressive these people uh, know about the value of uh, progress so they are not much concerned about these escalations of these issues so that's why we need to learn a lot from these countries okay you see the map here this is russia and uh, this is kamchatka peninsula this is sakhalin peninsula japan and uh, this is so south korea north korea you see here south korea and japan they both are usa's allies and north korea is a uh, enemy of usa china enemy of usa russia ch- enemy of usa so there is no point consistently in the future japan remains enemy with these nations okay the friendship would be very very fruitful where usa is on decline so that's the thing and you see the geography here east china sea uh, philippines sea east china sea south china sea and sea of okotas bering sea aleutian islands and uh, uh, these bering strait all these things are very very important geographically next you see kunur has got the airport lok sabha has passed dna technology bill that is going to be very very uh, fruitful in recognizing uh, enemies in the future sorry uh, these criminals in the future because database would be created and uh, it would be very easy within minutes they can recognize any suspect out of these dna profiling that is going to be done under this dna technological bill proposals okay although some oppositions are there that there that bill may bring some privacy issues but that's not a big issue because uh, when we do uh, we, when we go for the blood testing and all that that time also somebody can take our blood and somebody can profile our dnas and uh, uh, our genetic uh, map because cells are there everywhere even in the blood even in the uh, any kind of fluid of the body so that thing is a issue but it brings more positive results if that thing becomes possible the dna profiling becomes possible and for the agencies it would be very very easy so it's a positive step next nilekani is going to head a panel created by rbi where the digital payments are rising in the country so this committee is created and nilekani will head this rbi panel for this digital payments and geeta gopinath joins imf first uh, chief economist women chief economy women chief economist and she is 47 years old from india education was this and princeton university she did her phd so first woman to occupy the top imf post first woman okay so i would conclude the uh, lesson now it was a lengthy lesson but uh, a lot of things were discussed some backlog i also cleared with the kurel islands uh, article and all so thanks a lot any issue if appears then please please i am going fast but please cooperate with this thing because i am giving a lot of data which you were getting previously i am giving a lot of data and pdfs will be given to you these were more than 50 slides i think so these knowledge is going to be very very crucial in the prelims examination and in the mains examination okay so that's the thing mcqs i would discuss tomorrow thanks a lot